Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I want to talk about tomorrow's trading day in regards to the CPI data numbers that are coming out on Tuesday at 7.30 a.m. Central Standard Time, 8.30 Eastern Time. So it says Tuesday's inflation report could show prices moderating as gasoline and travel costs fall. I'm going to talk a little bit about some things in this article here. We're also going to look at the futures and what that's looking like for tomorrow and kind of go over uh, what you could be expecting tomorrow. So it says August Consumer Price Index will be released Tuesday at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and is expected to show inflation. Inflation is moderating. The report could be confusing because the economists surveyed by the Dow Jones expect the CPI to decline by 0.1%, but it is also expected to rise by 0.3% excluding energy and fuel. The report is seen as a key guidance for next week's Federal Reserve rate decision, but economists say that it's also crucial for the longer term view on interest rates since it could show whether some causes of inflation are receding. So this here, if you take out the decline in gasoline and travel, then it obviously goes up because everything else is still, well, maybe not everything else is going up, but if things are still going up, right? Food's still expensive, um, all kinds of things are still expensive, but fuel and travel are declining because we're getting closer to November. <laughs> okay, kind of figured that was coming. Uh, it says inflation is still sizzling hot, but is expected to have moderated in August as gasoline prices dropped, supply chains improved, and the cost of travel fell. The consumer price index will be released tomorrow, and that report could be a bit messy since the inflation is expected to fall while core inflation excluding energy and food should rise. Uh, the report is also key because it's expected to influence the Federal Reserve's decision on how much to raise interest rate hikes next week and more importantly in the long term. CPI for all items is projected to have actually declined by 0.1% month over month in August after a flat reading in July according to the Dow Jones on an annual basis headline CPI would then be running at a pace of 8% down from 8.5% in July. But excluding gasoline, core CPI is expected to rise by 0.3%, the same as July. On a year-over-year -year basis, that would make for a 6% increase, even hotter than the 5.9% uh, gain that month. But I think gasoline is a big thing. I think a lot of people are watching, pricing in, kind of keeping using uh, the prices at the pump as a guide, in my opinion. But we'll see what the article says here in a second. For the Fed, the report is widely expected to confirm it needs to keep needs to keep up its fight against inflation with an interest rate hike next week of 0.75 percentage points, the third of that size in a row. If the inflation data is weakened than expected, some economists say there's an outside chance that the Fed could raise by just half a percent. If anything, the risk is it could just come in a little weaker, said uh, Anita more something, chief economist at Jeffries. I have energy goods down 10.2 percent that should knock off a half percent i think the core is going to be more important and says watching the prices at the pump gasoline prices are the biggest driver of the decline in energy since peaking at 501 in mid-june the national average for unleaded gas has dropped all summer to an average of 371 per gallon on monday and they expect the headline cpi to, to decline by 0.2 percent but sees a rise in core of 0.3%. Shelter is one area expected to rise while used car prices are, are predicted to fall. I think we're going to see a repeat in terms of the airfare and hotel prices. They dragged down the core CPI data last month. It looks like airfare will be down 8%. They were up 40% from March to May. We're just unwinding a portion of that. Economists say that the base efforts of comparing the numbers to last year are behind the jump in August core inflation because the base affects annual core inflation while likely accelerating in the next two reports, which would make uncomfortable headlines for the Fed, wrote uh, Barina Ulisa, chief U.S. economist at T. Rowe Price. She said that it should not matter to the central bank officials because they will be more focused on momentum and will be watching the three-month and six-month annualized pace. But they're also sensitive to how it will look to the public and to Congress even more reasons to ma maintain a hawkish focus. Strategists say that the Fed's September 21st rate decision 
may be affected by the August CPI data report, but the details inside that report may be more important in terms of what they say about the longer term outlook that could help shape the expectations for the Fed's end or terminal rate when it stops hiking. They just need to stop printing money, dude. That's what they're causing inflation. They just keep printing money and printing money and printing money. And that's what started this whole freaking thing is the government just keeps printing money out of thin air. So <laughs> here we go. Everything just starts rising and rising and rising. And then don't get me started on the energy prices. We shut down the Keystone pipeline. That was the thing that started the whole darn thing. Uh, gas prices starting to move up and up and up and then you know of course like I've been saying we get closer to November things are going to kind of start slowing down and down and down and then by that time who knows they may do something to screw the whole thing up all over again um, but anyway rant ended looking for the end game market expectation for the Fed's terminal rate has have been inching higher and in the future market the view is it'll reach 4% by early next year uh, they expect it could reach 4% to 4.25 in January. This is where we start looking for whether there is a, a shift in core patterns where the Fed can ramp down or not. Um, they expect policymakers to rise or raise the Fed's target, funds target, range by 75 basis point next week. Um, blah, 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 kind of the same old thing. They're kind of repeating themselves what we just said. Um, so let's let's kind of let's go ahead and take a look at uh, at the futures because they're just kind of repeating what we've been saying the whole article pretty much. So I checked that out tomorrow morning, 7:30 Central Time, 8:30 Eastern Time. Uh, currently, the futures are actually turning red. <laughs> they were green earlier, and now they are turning red. So uh, one of two things are going to happen tomorrow. We're going to come out and the markets are going to get completely obliterated because people are freaked out by the inflation data numbers. Or we're going to come out and it's going to come in lighter than expected and we're going to have a really, really good green day. Honestly, this setup I'm looking at in the markets is I think we're going to have a red day, unfortunately, but I hope I'm completely wrong on that aspect. So let me know your comments below. Let me know if you're taking a look at the CPI data numbers in the morning. As you can see here, uh, the fear and greed index we'll take a look at that really quick before I let you go is uh, right here it shows that we're at about uh, yet yeah, we're we're neutral so the market doesn't know where the heck to go yet we don't know if the data numbers are going to come back lighter and go green we don't know if they're going to come back crappier and we're going to go back here but uh, we'll find that out first thing in the morning so uh, keep an eye out for that other than that guys we'll catch you in the next one